Well, we want to celebrate the mothers that are in the room, those that yeah. are watching online, you know, those that aren't with us, those that, that have gone before us, those that, you know, uh, in every yeah. facet of life, we want to honor mothers, wow. you know, you know, our society, they want to get rid of Mother's Day and, and uh, you know, in the woke culture, but, but I want you to know without mothers, you and I wouldn't be here. <laughs> There's no expansion of, 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 of the human race without mothers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can yeah. say, well, you know, this mother, that's not a mother, hey. whatever. But the reality is, without a mother, there is no expansion. Right. Yeah, right. No. So praise God for mothers. Come on. And so, ladies, I have a word for you and uh, that God gave me before we started uh, this afternoon. And I hear the Lord wow, say yeah. that he has planted a seed in your heart this year that has not been planted in your heart before. Mm. And he declares over you that it's taken root. Mm. And he says, I will water the seed of what I've planted so that you don't try to make it happen. Mm. Yeah. Just as you gave birth to mm. natural children or spiritual children, mm. so you will give birth to the seed I have planted. Mm. And that seed for every mother may be different, but I've planted a seed. Mm. For some of those, that seed is what you've been asking for. For some of you, it's the seed that was given to you. And all I ask is that, um, all I ask is for a heart that says, let it be done unto me as you have declared. Let it be done to me as you have declared. Lord, I receive. Every lady in the room, every lady watching the line, I receive. I receive. I thank you that your seed has taken root. And Father, in the moment that that seed comes to birth, I thank you that you'll show me what's taking place. In the mighty name. Of Jesus. And every woman said, Let it be done unto me as you have declared. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And those that, that are watching online, you know, those that are watching or those that are here today, you know, there's a flower that, uh, you know, there's a nice, beautiful rose that, that I want you to take uh, with you, uh, you know, and please take one for your wives. Uh, that are with us and, and uh, just take one and, and just give it to them and, and just express our love to them uh, and for them. And so ladies, I hope you're blessed today and always. Hallelujah. Today also is the 44th year anniversary of Victory Churches International. 44 years ago on Mother's Day, Victory Churches was was formed, wow. and uh, and so we want to honor Victory Churches, and we want to thank you, Dr. George and Hazel Hill, for for what God had called them to, yes, and uh, you know we thank you for all the spiritual mothers. How many have spiritual mothers in their life? Yes. You know? yes. man, you know we we got to honor them, yes. and of course Dr. Hazel is a spiritual mother in our life, and and uh, and and Pastor Debbie as well, and so we want to honor them. And, uh, and so praise God for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We're in Victor Revival Center. We're a city. Uh, city. We're a, a city on a set on a hill. Uh, <laughs> yes, we are. In the city of Brantford. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> right? And we're called to reveal our light. And, and yeah. we're, our hope is that you get revived and become equipped and become the Reformation. Yes. Yeah. See, I'm becoming, I am becoming the, Reformation. the Reformation. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah. Jesus. Just a couple announcements. Uh, uh, Tuesday night Bible study. Uh, as we dig into the psalm, Psalm 17 this week, and uh, it's going to be a glorious time together. And so we, we do that here at 125 Blackburn Drive in the city of Brantford, and of course online through Zoom uh, as well. So we want you to connect in for that starting at 7 o'clock. And of course, next Sunday evening, 
Ron's going to be ministering to us next Sunday evening. So we're looking forward to Ron's going to share. I don't know if he's going to continue on in the transforming dance of the Trinity. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I you know whatever the Lord lays on his heart, he's gonna, it's going to be awesome and powerful. So we want you to be here for that and connect in. And uh, it's going to be awesome. Amen? Amen. Well, let's dig into the Word tonight. Let's flip over to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And as you're turning there, you know, our word for this year is designed to abide in the power of three. You know, and this, this whole idea is that God designed us, he designed mankind to abide, to abide in him. He designed mankind to, to abide in the power of the Trinity, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, uh, and so, so we've been kind of digging into different aspects of this. And last week we talked about, um, you know, the whole uh, uh, body and blood of Jesus. And, and man, that was such a powerful time last Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I want to kind of continue on in a way. Um, and really I've titled this message, Tr The Transforming Power of Abiding in His Offering. Mm -hmm. The Transforming Power of of abiding in his offering. And so let's look at this, starting in verse uh, 3. And it says, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, and he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and they throw them into the fire and they are burned. And if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. And by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. You know, it's so so powerful because the reality is, is that how many know Jesus is the offering? Yes. Jesus yes. is the greatest offering and his offering, the offering of himself mm -hmm. is transforming in nature. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Think about this. You know, really, you know, this might might take you for a loop, but but when Jesus died on the cross, he died for all mankind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? He died for every single person. Yes. Right? And his desire in that, uh, in that pouring out of his life, in the offering of his life, was to be the transforming power that you and I abide in his offering. Man, so powerful, isn't it? You know, the power of his offering where you and I become the transforming uh, uh, power in abiding in his offering. Mm. In other words, think, think about this. How many were to mirror Jesus? Yes. We're to reflect yes. him. We're to reflect yes. his image and likeness. And mm. think about this. His image and likeness is an offering. Right. In other mm. words, when you and I become the offering, yes. just as he's the offering, we become the transforming power in somebody else's life. Hmm. Mm. You'll, you'll see this kind of unfold as we go into it. Go over to Exodus chapter 25. Exodus 25. Exodus chapter 25. Awfully close to Genesis. It is. <laughs> we might get there to Genesis. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Exodus 25. Verse starting in verse uh, 1. <laughs> then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel. That they bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willing with his heart, you shall take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take from them. Gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, Badger skins and acacia wood, oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. Wow. Oh. And let them make me a sanctuary 
Mm -hmm. that I may dwell among wow. them Amazing. according to all that I show you. Mm -hmm. That is, the pattern mm -hmm. of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings just so mm -hmm. you shall make it. I want to suggest to you that, mm -hmm. that when Moses is receiving this, he's actually seeing a heavenly tabernacle. Mm -hmm. He's seeing mm -hmm. the heavenly Jesus. Mm -hmm. How many know Jesus is the fullness of the tabernacle? Yeah. Jesus is the fullness of the offering. So when we see all the things that, that the Israelites were to bring, they were to bring all these different things. But how many know Jesus is the exact representative of all that they were to bring? Yeah. So powerful to me. That, that Look what he says here. He says, he says to Moses, speak to the children of Israel, that they may bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly... With his heart, you shall take my offering. Mm. Mm, that's right. Mm -hmm. You shall take my offering. In other words, the people are giving the offering, but in the midst of giving the offering, it's my offering. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's transforming power when you give an offering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, there's transforming power transforming when we give an offering. Mm -hmm. Because the offering is, the offering. is his offering. Is his offering. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so you know, our word is designed to abide in the power of three. But when we look at the number three, we discover that it's an important number to God. It's so important, you know, that we see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We see Spirit, Soul, and Body. We see Spirit, Water, and Blood. We see uh, Pentecost pa or Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. We, we we see all kinds of threes being made manifest in in, in Scripture. And there are many that Jesus, we talked about a little bit on one last week, that the kingdom of, of God is, is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Right? The power of three. Everybody say the power of three. Right? And, uh, and so there's, there's something interesting I wanted to pull out before I get into this, is that the number three in Scripture, or the number three in Hebrew, is actually a relational uh, thing. Uh, let, me, let me say it another way. In the Hebrew, every letter, every word, and every number is relational in nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Completely relational. It's mm -hmm. not like that in English. You know, when mm -hmm. you when you look at numbers in English, there's no relationship to numbers. There's there's no relationship to the words that we even right. say. But when we look into the Hebrew culture, mm -hmm. when we look into the Hebrew language, we discover that it is a relational language. And so, and every letter represents a number, which means numbers are relational in nature. Mm -hmm. They relate something to us, okay? They relate something. Say, say numbers, numbers. Relate, relate something to us, okay? And so when Jesus offers his body, blood, we, we are invited into the power of three. Mm -hmm. His offering of himself has transforming power. The ultimate power of an offering is love from a willing heart. Mm. Let me say that again. The ultimate power of an offering is love from a willing heart. Mm. In other words, his love offering is himself. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, mm -hmm. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit has offered to us their whole heart. See, the whole heart of Yahweh has been given to man. Think about that for a minute. The whole offering, all of himself. See, see when, when Jesus offered, he didn't just offer a part of himself. He offered his whole self. He offered to you and I his character. He offered mm -hmm. to you and I his, his, his abundant nature. He offered to you and I, you know, uh, all that he is. Oh, yeah. Right? Power. All that he is. His power. Okay, his power. I mean, every aspect of who he is, he's offered that to you and I. Now consider this. When we look at this passage here in, in Exodus 25, we, we discover this word offering. This word offering in the Hebrew text is, is, a, is a Hebrew word, teruma, and it, it, it's an offering, but it actually means an uplifting. 
Say that with me. It means an uplifting. Okay? And can also mean to exalt. Okay? Teruma comes from the root word room, which means to lift up or exalt. So let me ask you the question. What does an offering have to do with lifting up or exalting? Okay, so watch this. So Jesus is the offering that transforms you and I to become mm -hmm. lifted up, mm -hmm. to be seated with him, mm -hmm. right? Exalted. Can, how many know we can't do it in our, in our own? He does. He does the uplifting. So when you and I begin to see his offering, we become his offering where we begin to offer and uplift him. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, the word willingly here... Um, is the Hebrew word nadab, and, and it means to incite, to impel, and can also mean to be free. But it's more correctly rendered as everyone whose heart moves him. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Everyone whose heart moves him. In other words, we can read it this way. From everyone whose heart moves him, you shall take my offering. Mm. That makes sense. What are you being moved by? Mm. What can you by the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. So impel is the word impeller that moves the boat. Maybe some of you never hear the word impel. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? So what are you and I being impelled mm -hmm. to? You know? And and so mm -hmm. this concept of offering is so so interesting that yeah. that that when you know, the Lord offered himself. Not only was he lifting himself up and being exalted, but, but we were being lifted up and exalted. Mm. I don't know about you, but I have our time with that sometimes. Mm. Mm. See, I think even in the church today, we have a hard time with that. Mm. You know, when we even sometimes when we sing songs that, 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 that you know, we'll sing, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'll, I'll say, well, I hear the Lord sing. You know, we'll say, I love you, I praise you. And the Lord says, I love you and I praise you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sings it back to us, yeah. Right? He yeah. sings it back to mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and to me. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's who he is. Right. Because our offering to him becomes his offering to us. Mm -hmm. And his offering to us becomes our offering to him. Mm -hmm. see, see, you know, because we're moved. See, think about this. When you and I are moved to praise, he's moved to praise you. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right? See, see we got to get this. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're doing it so that we can be praised. It's, it's, it's his heart is being moved to praise oh, you, to lift you up. That's the transforming power of offering. So when you give, whatever it is that you give, if you're giving your heart to him, then, then his heart comes, you know, it's because his heart's been given to us. So we're giving his heart to him. You know, when we give of our finances, it's because his wealth has been given to us. So John 3.16, we know, we know that John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he, that he gave, that he became the offering. Right, he became the say he became the offering. Became the offering. See, he was moved by his love mm. to become the offering. Mm. Mm. Are you and I moved mm. by his love mm. to be the offering to him? Mm. Mm. All of a sudden, I see us in the, that transforming dance. Yeah, absolutely. See, the Trinity was moved by love in the heart that, that the three that are one offered himself as an offering. And the transforming power of the offering comes from a moved heart. Yeah. yeah. Say a moved heart. a moved heart. See, the heart of Yahweh was so moved and given to mankind. The question comes down to, is our heart moved by his heart being moved? Where we become mm -hmm. the offering. Mm. Mm. Go with me to John 14. Mm. 
John 14. John 14, let's look at starting in verse 1 here. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. See, Jesus has prepared the prepared place, the place of abiding, the place of heaven, the seat of of, 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 of where we sit with him. He's prepared that place. Right? Not only has he prepared the place, but he has set you in place. Mm -hmm. <sighs> he prepared the place to set you in place so you could live from the place. And as you live from the place, become the offering that transforms and brings people to him. Mm -hmm. See so the abiding place. The abiding place. Jesus has offered his life, his wealth, his love, his peace, his joy. What are you and I offering in return? I've said this before at the Passover meal. Judas partook of the body and blood of Jesus. Mm. But Judas refused to offer his life to Jesus and became a betrayer. Mm. I want to suggest to you that God's looking for us to become an offering because he is the offering. Mm. Go with me to Romans 12. Mm. Kind of setting the stage here. Romans chapter 12. And in verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice or as a living offering, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I love what the Amplified says. The Amplified says, Dedicating all of yourselves set apart. Okay? Mm -hmm. Set apart for this is your reasonable act of worship. Mm -hmm. See, offering. Uh -huh. See, you and I are to become or to be to offer our lives right. as a living offering. Mm -hmm. Mm. So it's, a, it's, it's a permanent state of being. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a, yes. And because we're already crucified with Christ, like this Galatians 2.20 says, in uh, Romans 12, verse 1, if you read in the Amplified, he says, it only makes sense that you would lay down your life. Because you already died. That's right. Just don't fight it. Go for it. <laughs> Take it one step further. You and I were bought with a price. Yeah. But here's the thing. I say all mankind, all all mankind. mankind. saved and unsaved, saved saved and unsaved. has been bought with a price. All mankind. Which means none of us mm -hmm. are our own. Mm -hmm. None of us. Yes. None. Yes. Say none. 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 <laughs> right? The, none. the question comes none. back to, am I willing to offer... Mm -hmm. Right? See, you are bought with a price, but he's waiting for your, mm -hmm. your offering. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Offering of willingness. That's yeah. Right? Your offering, which which comes out of a willing mm -hmm. heart, right? Yes. A heart that is moved. Yes. yes. See, see, 
Now, mm -hmm. how many know the Holy Spirit does a great job in moving our heart? <laughs> right? Yeah. right? I don't know about you, but He does a great job in moving our heart. Yeah, yeah, right? I remember, I, remember, I remember when we, when I, it was, I just rededicated my life to the Lord, and, and I just starting, uh, you know, I, I met Allison, and, 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 uh, and we started dating, we got married, and, and, and Allison's mother said this, this to me one time. She challenged me, and she said, she said when, God's, when God's got a hold of a man's pocketbook, he has his heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. He has his heart. That challenged me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It challenged me to the core. Mm -hmm. And 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 I like I've, being challenged. Mm. I've been believing for a while. And I've been believing for a while. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? But it challenged me to the core because I grabbed a hold of a revelation mm -hmm. that it's not mine anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's his. Mm -hmm. And so I became moved mm -hmm. by his heart. Mm -hmm. See, when you and I get moved by his heart, man, see, see, some people like, you know, let, let me say it this way. See, a lot of people just pay their tithes. Mm -hmm. And I believe in tithe. I really do. But the real part of giving it's everything. is everything. Mm -hmm. It's the whole. It's all. It's 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 Lord. This isn't mine, mm -hmm. and so no longer am I held back. I'm free right. yeah, amen. to Hallelujah. offer. Yes. Yeah. The house isn't mine. Mm -hmm. The vehicles aren't mine. Mm -hmm. My kids aren't mine. Mm -hmm. They're His. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Right. Yeah. I've been, I'd like to share a story. It, like my husband does taxes, so we have all kinds of people. Coming in, and this is this beautiful young man walked to the door one day, and brought. It's the first time he came, and uh, he gave Brian all this information, and he said, "And I just wrote this check," and Brian said, "Oh yeah, what's it for?" And he said, "Tithes and offerings from our church." So, and Brian said, "Oh," he, he says, "Can I use that?" Brian said, "Absolutely." So, anyway, the young man gave him all the information and chatted with him for a minute, and then he packed up and left. He came back three weeks later. He God saved him from being electrocuted on his job. Mm. God saved him within that mm -hmm. three weeks from being electrocuted mm -hmm. because he loves the Lord, yeah. not mm -hmm. because he paid his tithes, yeah. but because he loves. That's right. The Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. See, I'm called. I'm called, called to be his offering. To be his, his offering. offering. Mm. So he says here, offer your bodies, all of your faculties, all that you are, oh. everything that you have, all that you are, spirit, soul, and body, oh, right. mind, your thought life, your your desires, your, your emotions, uh, everything, offer them up as a living. The word living actually relates to intimacy. Okay? The word sacrifice in the Hebrew, it's the word zabak, and, and in Hebrew, which has the idea of giving up what is close to your heart. Okay? A living sacrifice is then intimately giving up what is close to your heart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that our relationship with God becomes the outflow of our life. Right. Let me say it again. A living sacrifice is then intimately giving up what is close to your heart mm -hmm. so that your relationship with God becomes the outflow of your life. Mm -hmm. See, what is close to your heart today mm -hmm. may not be close to your heart tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Follow me with this. Tomorrow, today, I might be worried about something What's close to your heart? Fear. <laughs> right? Fear. Whatever it is. What's close to your heart today may not be what's close to your heart tomorrow. Right. So it's an everyday thing. It's a lifestyle. It's, it's this place of, mm -hmm. of offering of what is close to my heart. Because what is close to my heart will be what I offer to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
right? So that's why I've got to offer up my, the way I think and, 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 and the way I feel and offer that up to the Lord. Why? Because I want him to be close to my heart. And so I want to be the offering that he's called me to be so that in the offering, he becomes close to my heart. Right. Not what I, not, 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 not my, uh, my fears, not my, 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 you know, low points, not my whatever. It's now, I want him to be close to my heart and I want to be moved by his heart and not moved by my fears, not moved by my inhibitions, not moved by, by my frailties. Because my relationship with God is the key to living in the transforming power of abiding right. in his offering. Mm. See, being a living sacrifice is really being an intimate offering, being lifted up to Yahweh so that Yahweh's life flows out of you and I. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus says this to the disciples. He says, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We're not even going to get into the truth and the life tonight, but, but I want to suggest to you that, that Yeshua is the way. Everybody say, he's the way. He's the way. Now, what's fascinating is we've got to under, un, uncover this concept of the way, the, the, the way. And so let's go to Psalm 25. Psalm 25. Because if we're going to become the offering, if we're going to become the transforming offering that he's calling you and I to be, we've got to understand the Yeshua way. Mm -hmm. Say the Yeshua way. Yeshua Yeshua way. way. And so uh, Psalm 25 gives us a picture into the Yeshua way. Psalm 25 and verse... Four, says this, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Teach me your paths. See, the word way or ways in Hebrew is the Hebrew word derek. And in its Semitic root, it means a doorway or a path. To someone's presence. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. In its Semitic root, it means a doorway or path to someone's presence. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know, the psalmist, David, is he's writing here and he's saying to the Lord, Show me your path, show me your doorway mm -hmm. to your presence. Mm -hmm. Remember, Jesus said, He is the way right. yeah. which means David is encountering and asking to encounter mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. so, so it is, it's, it's almost as if uh, and these paths are are actually in Christ himself yeah. they're, they're in him that's right yeah yeah mm. and, and you'll see you'll see this in a minute mm -hmm. and, and how how important that path those paths are. Mm -hmm. So he says, he, so this Hebrew word Derek means uh, the doorway or path to the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Let me say it another way. It's the doorway or path to the presence of God, but also it's the doorway to the intimate presence of God. Mm -hmm. In other words, Jesus was saying, I am the doorway, the path to the intimate presence of God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus has offered you and I the doorway to the presence of himself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the key is, are we intimately going into the presence of Yahweh? Mm. See, do we consciously go in? Mm. Now remember, Jesus is the doorway. Right? He said in John chapter 10, verse 9, I am the door, and he who enters by me shall be what? Saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. In other words, are we consciously going in to the presence of God? I know we're called to live from the presence, but, 
but and, and we do, but are we consciously in our spirit going into mm. our spirit, man? Right. Going into the presence, mm -hmm. the intimate presence of God. In other words, are we shutting the door to other things in our life and taking time to go in? Even though I'm in, I need to go in. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. Let me say it again. Even though I'm in, I need to go in. Yes. Right? In other words, you can't just live your life and just continue to do what you're doing without going in right. to that which you're already in. I know it sounds kind of messed up, but but the reality is is that that's that's what Jesus that's how Jesus lived his life. Mm -hmm. He went in. How I many know he went in? Right? Every time he went up to the mountain, right, to pray or to seek God, what was he doing? He was going into that intimate place. He was mm -hmm. consciously going in. Right. To the presence of God, even though he lived in the presence of God. Yeah, he was posturing himself. Yeah, he's yeah. posturing. He's going in. Right. See, I'm called to go in. Called to go in. Called to go in. Yeah. The old time was called out a prayer closet where they shut themselves away from everything except for Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my friend's mother uh, had kids all around her, so she couldn't do that. So she she taught them when she had had a wreath over her head. Yep. <laughs> they weren't to bother her. Yeah, whatever works, whatever right? Works. I mean, think about think about what are some you know triggers that trigger you into the presence of God. Mm. Mm. Every time you open a door, mm, Jesus said He is the yeah. door. A door, right? So when we see a natural door, it should be it, it should give us a trigger, mm. right? We go in and out of our house we go in and out of of our bedroom we go in and out of we cross thresholds mm -hmm. right and so God's looking for a people who are willing to cross the threshold not just say oh I love you Jesus but cross into the threshold or through the threshold where we are consciously spending time with him I'm not even talking about reading the word no. I'm talking about just consciously going I'm living in you. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm here with you. I'm, I'm crossing through a threshold, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes it requires a prophetic act. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it requires us lifting up an apron over our eyes mm -hmm. or, 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 or opening a door and shutting a door or, mm -hmm. you know, whether that be in the natural or whether that be in the spirit, mm -hmm. right? That's what he's calling up people to. This one. How about posturing for pasturing? That's, oh, good. that's good. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, really good. Like that. mm -hmm. Posturing for pasture. Mm -hmm. for, for pasture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Right? And so and so here we, we discover in Psalm 25 that David's saying, show me your ways. In other words, show me your intimate presence. That was David's desire. Ron's, David's desire. Yeah. Ron's comment here was don't shoo away Yahweh's way. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> don't, don't shoo, shoo away. away. Don't shoo it away. God's way. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's right? Lost in the forest for you. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> so so <laughs> Jesus life. Let me say it this way. Jesus life revolved around the Father. Mm -hmm. Not what was going on in the world. Hmm. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's sad. <laughs> Jesus' life revolved around the Father, not what was going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Jesus was in the paths. Mm -hmm. This word paths, listen to this. This word paths in the Hebrew literally means circle. In other words, David is, you know, what David's saying is so powerful. Show me your ways, O oh Lord. Teach me your circle. Teach me your circle. Right? In other words, David's desire was never to get out of the circle. He wanted to stay in the circle. See, I gotta stay in the circle. Right? Yeah. I've got to stay in the circle, mm -hmm. and that comes out of the abiding in the transforming power of his offering. Because yeah. his offering brought us into the circle. Yeah, if you yes. think about a circle, a circle has a constant radius, right? Yeah. So you can't go further than that. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which takes on a whole new dimension that when we step to the left or to the right of the circle, mm -hmm. the Spirit of God is there if we're Whoa. yielding to the Spirit mm -hmm. to keep us in the circle. Because right. mm -hmm. He wants us to stay in the circle because if we stay in the circle, we stay in harmony. Yeah. Amen. When we stay in the circle, we stay and become transformed in His offering yes. where we become a transforming offering to those that we see. Mm -hmm. Puts a new emphasis on the old hymn, let the circle be broken by you, by you, mm -hmm. by you. Yeah. 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 See, what's the circle of our life? Mm -hmm. Does our life revolve around Him? Mm -hmm. Or does our life revolve around our issues? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. right. right? Our circumstances, our situations, right. our fears, our, 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 our failures, our, you know, and, and it's so easy to get caught in the circle of our failure. Mm -hmm. And he's calling us to get into the circle because he's put us in the circle. Right. Huh. He's put, say, say, he's put me he's put in the circle. In the circle. Of the Trinity. The Trinity. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it's no. a... No. Yeah. See... Huh. See... <laughs> mm -hmm. Say, I'm in the circle. I'm in the circle. circle. But I gotta live in the circle. But I gotta yes. live in the circle. See, His life revolved around the presence of God, which mm -hmm. means the new creation, the new creature in Christ... Mm -hmm revolves around the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what an offering is. Offer your bodies as a living mm -hmm. sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Offer yourself up mm -hmm. so that you stay mm -hmm. in the right circle. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. His death, burial, and resurrection brought you into the circle which He never wants you to leave. Mm -hmm. Mm. See, when we live in the way, abiding and living in the in his presence, we become the way in our sphere of influence. As he is, so are we. I'm not saying we're Jesus. No. Right? But what I'm saying is, is as he is, so are we. And if he's the the transforming offering, we become the transforming our offering where we begin to what? Point people to his presence. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't want to point somebody to, to a, a words on the page. Mm -hmm. I don't want to point somebody to fire insurance. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to point somebody to, to, to religion. Right. I want to point them into the circle. You know, I mean, the world has used the circle of life, mm -hmm. right? You know, uh, you know, but how many of the reality, the circle of life is the Trinity. Yes. That's the true circle yeah. of life. Yes. There is none other mm -hmm. than him. And so, so we're called to live within the circle, which is his way. Mm -hmm. See, that's the Yeshua way. Now go with me to Genesis 5. Genesis 5. I told you to get to Genesis. Genesis chapter 5. Now I've been meditating this week and uh, just, you know, on different, a few different words and, and uh, a few different things. And, and, and this just kept coming back to me. Mm. You know, in Genesis 5, we're going to read from verse 21 to 32. So let's look at this. Enoch lived... 65 years, and begot Methuselah. And after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech, after he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. 
Lamech lived 182 years and had a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This one will, be, will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. And after he begot Noah, Lamech lived 590 five years and had sons and daughters so all the days of Lamech were 777 years mm. and he died and Noah was 500 years old and Noah begot Shem, Ham and Yapheth <laughs> mm -hmm. how many men that many women that today if you that <laughs> run fast <laughs> that's a big old family reunion yeah. <laughs> so, so what's fascinating in this mm. passage is you know we, we don't have a lot in the, in, the, in the Word of God about Enoch. Mm -hmm. But what we do have sets the stage yeah. mm -hmm. for who Enoch was mm -hmm. and what the Lord's awakening the church in our day to. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let me kind of break down a few things here and, and as we dig into this, um, and, and, and then we'll finish up. Everybody say Enoch. Enoch. Enoch in the Hebrew in Strong's means dedicated or disciplined. It can also mean teach or teacher. But what's fascinating to me is that in its pictorial form, you know, when we understand Hebrew, as I said before, it's a relational uh, uh, language. It's, it's, it's not only relational, but it's pictorial. Before it was letters, it was in picture form. Mm. And when we look at the picture form of, of Enoch, we discover something really about who Enoch was in his life. Okay, his in pictorial form, his name is spelled uh, Chet, Nun, Vav, and Kaf. Okay, Chet, Nun, Vav, and Kaf. The letter Chet speaks of a private sanctuary or a place of protection. It can also mean new beginnings or new life. The Nun speaks of a uh, fish, was in the picture of a fish. It speaks of activity and life. The Vav. Excuse me, the va speaks of a nail, and it connects two things together. You know, heaven and earth. Um, you know, how many of the nails of Jesus connected us with? Okay, so connection. And the calf speaks of an open hand, and can also mean to cover. So think about this. Chet is the private sanctuary. Enoch lived in the sanctuary, or in the presence of the Lord, before he lived in in the sanctuary of the Lord. Mm. Mm -hmm. For 300 years. Now think about this. So he's 65 years old. He begets Methuselah. Somewhere in the birth of Methuselah, he has an encounter with Yahweh. Mm. We don't know what that encounter exactly looks like, mm. but what we know is that he has an encounter because it says after Methuselah was born... Mm -hmm. He, he walked with God for 300 years. Mm. Does, that, does that walk, is that the same as Adam and Eve in the garden? Is Absolutely. Is that the same relationship? Absolutely. So think about this. And we're gonna, we'll, we'll dig into that in, in a minute. So he's in this place of protection. Mm. He, in other words, for 300 years, he's dwelling in the place yes. of the offering. Mm. I don't think we I don't think we comprehend mm. the reality of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection before the foundations of the world. Mm. Oh, another thought. Can I share another thought? Just 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 give me a second. Right ahead. Okay, think about this. Mm -hmm. Before the foundations of the world, mm -hmm. Jesus had already died, mm -hmm. been buried, and resurrected. Mm -hmm. Which means mankind could Step in mm -hmm. to a future time. Oh. Mm. Step into a future time right. before that happened. Mm -hmm. In the natural, yes. In the natural. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is Enoch. This is this is Enoch. Enoch right. stepped into a future time. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God's calling the church mm -hmm. to step into a future time. Mm -hmm. 
and live the future time, that which was meant for the future, to live in that now. now. See, now. now. See, see, we're so focused now. on getting somewhere yes. rather than realizing that we're yes. already yes. there and he's calling you and I to live yes. from there, yes. from the future in the now, mm -hmm. so the now becomes our life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. See, it's not about me going to heaven. Mm. It's not about getting somebody saved so they can go to heaven. Mm -hmm. it's, it, if the reality is salvation right, right. is causing you and I to get into the circle of the Trinity, mm -hmm. to establish relationship with him in the Trinity, in the now right. that was that was meant for the future, mm -hmm. and bring that into the now so that in the now we're living from a future state. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot in that. Yes, there is. <laughs> All right? Now, the nun. The nun speaks of activity and life. Think about this. Enoch is living in the activity and life of Jesus' offering. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh. Think about that. He is so in communion with God. Right. Let me take one step further. In the Hebrew text, this word walk with God mm -hmm. is, in the, is in the future tense. Not in the past tense. Mm -hmm. It's in the, or, and it's not even in the now tense. It's in the future tense, which means he walked with God to a dimension that was not meant for mm -hmm. his time. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the tribulation. If we would only get into the circle, you're talking about the the transformation of the taking people off the church off the earth, the same as Enoch went. If we would only get into the circle. No, that's yeah. not what I'm talking no. about. You are not. No, watch. No, no. See, see, the church is trying to get out yeah. of tribulation. <laughs> no, I'm tribulation. Talk I'm talking about no, no, let me let me take one step further. Let me take it deeper. Because we gotta get a revelation of this. Yeah. God's not trying to get us out of the world. But he's going to take the church out. Okay, hold on, hold on. Just 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 we, we gotta get this revelation because we're so focused on trying to get out of here. Right? The rapture is not about getting out of here. Yeah, that's the word. Okay, the word rapture is not even in scripture, no. right? The catching away, the 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 the, the really. Let me, let me break it down. The word parousia literally means in the Greek. It literally means to go up and come right back down. Yeah. Okay. It does not mean to come up, go up, and stay there for seven years or three and a half years or whatever, and then come back down. That's not what the Greek word parousia means. It means to go up and immediately come back down. See, God's trying to get a people, the, the church, to a place where we become uh, in, where we live out of the transforming circle so that when tribulation comes, when the Antichrist shows up, when all that begins to take place, mm -hmm. we become, we, we live as the transforming, in the transforming offering, where we become the offering that begins to translate people from the outer oh. darkness into the kingdom of light. Mm -hmm. See, the whole purpose, and yes, I agree that the church will get transformed or will get caught away, but we're not getting caught away to, to go somewhere. We're getting caught away to come with Christ in the earth, uh, to manifest in the earth uh, the, the, the glory of God. Mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let, me, let me take it one step further. We've got to get outside of trying to get out of here. He's trying to get here. Okay, and and see the oh. the. Oh. <laughs> let, let me let me take oh. one step further. The, wow. Yes, Enoch got translated oh. right, right. right, and he did not pass oh. death. Yeah. And God's oh. trying to build a people right. who will not die right. a physical death. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So there'll come a time when Jesus is going to step in. And those that have gone before, right, will be raised up. And those that are here in the earth. And you can take this for everyone. If you believe in pre-trip, that's fine. If you believe in mid-trip, that's fine. If you believe in post-trip, that's fine. But, but get what I'm trying to say. God's trying to raise a people who will come to the end of self. Right. 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 And Enoch was not. Right. Right. So he's a, definitely a pre. And Enoch was not. In other words, the Enoch life was no longer the Enoch life. The life Enoch lived was the life of the offering. Which transformed him 
into the Shekinah presence. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, see, mm -hmm. where, where, and what I believe God's trying to do is He's trying to get us into the kind of presence so that the Shekinah presence comes here and manifests in everyday yeah. life. Wow. Right. Yes. That's the whole purpose. Mm -hmm. The purpose wasn't, the purpose of the rapture wasn't to try to take the church out. The purpose of the rapture is to, is, is to call the church up for a quick moment and, and come down, down to see so that those on the earth would see. Mm -hmm. wow. mm. <clears throat> now, the nun speaks of activity in life. What was the life and activity of Enoch? Mm. The life of Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was the life of Jesus. This is why, you know, Enoch is a perfect picture mm. of the Jesus life. It's the perfect picture. Say, it's the perfect picture. It's the perfect, it's the perfect, perfect. Right? The vow. Right? In, in, so Enoch, in the va, the nail, connects two things together. How many know Enoch was so connected to the Lord? He was so connected to the Trinity. See, see we don't, I don't think we have a revelation of how, how close and how intimate Enoch was with the fullness of the Trinity. He had to be pretty close with the Trinity. Because he was not. Right. It was no longer. Why? Because he lived out of the circle. Right. He lived out of the relational circle of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So to so the place where his spirit, soul, and body were one in the earth and one in heaven. Mm. Yeah. Think about this for a minute. Completely one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For 300 years. Now you're gonna, you, you'll see this kind of unfold. The calf speaks of an open hand. Let me open my hand. The Christ life. Right. He's living the Christ life before his time. He's living from a future position in a present time. He's setting the example for us. Yeah. Yes. yes. In other words, he consciously, now think about this. He consciously, just as you mentioned, you know, like Adam and Eve had the ability to, to walk with God in the earth and in heaven. He was walking with God, not only in the earth. He was walking with God in complete communion on the earth yeah. and in heaven right. to the place because he was no more. God decided, okay, I want him with me. Right. And you'll see something unfold here. Mm -hmm. So Enoch's a prophetic picture of Christ. Christ is our sanctuary. Mm -hmm. He's our life. He's our activity. Mm -hmm. He's the one who's connected us together through his open hands and has redeemed us from the curse. Mm -hmm. Say the transforming offering. Transforming. So he's 65. He has an encounter. He walks with God for 300 years and he passes on a legacy. Mm -hmm. Methuselah is the, 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 the man who lived the longest. 969 years. Years. Matter of fact, it's believed that Methuselah, when Methuselah, the name Methuselah, uh, is believed to actually speak of 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 um, the one that would die before the flood. Mm -hmm. hmm. In other words, when he died, the flood was coming. Right. Mm. The pronouncement was there. Mm. Okay, and so. Maybe that's the encounter that, that Enoch had. We don't know. All, but what we do know is the book of Jude that he was prophetic. He was a prophet. Right. Right? Okay. And he leaves a legacy. And we'll get into the legacy in a minute. So Enoch walked with God. Mm -hmm. In other words, Enoch's eyes became open to Yahweh and he walked with God in a future tense, in a future position in his present life. Mm. Enoch was so given over, so completely given over to God, mm. that God possessed every fiber of his being mm -hmm. to the place where he was totally at one with God. Mm. And Enoch was not. It was no longer about him. It was about him. Mm. Go over to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Are you good? Can you handle a little bit more? 
by the way. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 11. Paul, who I believe wrote Hebrews, I agree, mm-hmm. says here in verse 5, mm-hmm. By faith, Enoch was taken away mm-hmm. so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. Mm-hmm. For before he was taken, mm-hmm. he had this testimony that he pleased God. Mm-hmm. That he pleased God. Say, he pleased God. He pleased God. Now, the word please literally means to be in agreement. Mm-hmm. In other words, Enoch was in complete agreement <coughs> with the Trinity. Mm-hmm. He was in complete agreement right. in spirit, water, and blood. Mm-hmm. He was in complete agreement with Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Complete. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because the word uh, please means to be agreeable or to be in agreement. Then it goes on in verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to what? Please God. Okay. Or come into an agreement with him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. Mm -hmm. Enoch believed he was Redeemer. Mm -hmm. He was the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm. We're going to say he lived in a future place. In his present. Mm. That's prophetic for you and I. Mm. We can mm. live in a future place mm-hmm. in our present. That's mm-hmm. to God and living outside of linear time like we do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah. we're in the circle. Right. See, we, we in North America, our Western Greek mm-hmm. mindsets think linear. Mm-hmm. Right? If you don't believe me, you can just go through the word God. We think so linear. Well, that happened back then, mm-hmm. and so it's no longer for today. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. It's like flat earth society. But everything linear. in the word of God mm-hmm. revolves around <coughs> the circle, the trinity. Right. Right. Revolves around relationship. Revolves around the relationship between the mm-hmm. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And when we came out of the equation, when we stepped out of, when man sinned, man stepped out of the circle, God was was believing for a time where the circle, they could come back into the circle. Mm-hmm. And here's Enoch, seventh from Adam. Right. Mm-hmm. Seven speaks of what? Completion. Completion and mm-hmm. fullness. He was living in a complete state mm-hmm. with God. Right. Now, that, I don't know about you, but it messes with my mind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How is it possible? Right. Because he was the offering. He became the offering mm-hmm. because he saw the offering, mm-hmm. the transforming offering. Mm-hmm. And so he reflected the transforming offering, became the transforming offering, and then left a legacy. Through his son Methuselah, who then impacted us through Lamech, and through Lamech impacted us through Noah, mm-hmm. through Shem. Okay, and from Shem came Abram, mm-hmm. and from Abram all the way to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. The, 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 you know, so his, he, he, you know, his. Destiny, his his legacy is still living today. Right. So Paul is talking about you know the ex, you know this experience in the study of faith. The Aramaic word, listen to this. The Aramaic word used in the book of Hebrews passage for faith is is I'm probably not going to pronounce this right, but but Hamanah, which comes from a root word Yemen, which is in the in, which is the Aramaic equivalent of the Hebrew word Amen, which means a steadfastness and a sense of surety. Mm-hmm. However, Yaman creates a more beautiful picture as it's rooted in the Semitic word for one's right hand. Okay? Mm-hmm. This, this, when, I, when I saw this, I was like, wow. Jesus. The right hand was always symbolic of power. But it's also in the Semitic culture as a symbol of favor. Mm -hmm. It was a reference to one who was allowed to sit on the right hand of the king. Mm -hmm. Such an individual had the ultimate favor of the king. 
That's why the queen always was seated to the right side of the king mm -hmm. or on the king's right hand because she's the most favored of the king in all of his kingdom. Mm. Enoch, being on the right hand of God, was then consecrated to God. His entire being, his thought processes and everything that he was and had was given over to God that he literally became the king's bride. The king wanted his bride to be with him, and so he took him. Mm. In other words, yeah, go ahead. I keep hearing that scripture, Psalm 1611, in his presence is fullness of joy, and it's right, and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's a picture for you and I, yeah. Enoch as the bride. Now watch this. Go with me to Ephesians 2. Or sorry, Ephesians, yeah, Ephesians 2. Mm. Ephesians 2 takes on a, a much power, more powerful understanding. For starting verse 4, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Mm -hmm. And raised us up together right. and made us sit together mm -hmm. in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Right. So just as Enoch was translated into the glory in the presence of in the kind of presence of God, yeah. so you and I have been placed in the same place right now. Right, right now. now. Yeah. And we're called to live from that future place yes. in our now, yeah. just as Enoch did in his day. Yes. Yeah. See, we've been translated yes. already mm -hmm. into the heavenly place. Yeah. Yeah. See, I always thought of that as just because we were in Christ Jesus, we have been translated with him into the heavenly place spiritually mm -hmm. and physically. We can get there through prayer and supplication mm -hmm. and just being with him and honoring him and giving him everything we've got. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is we're called to abide in that place mm -hmm. where we can actually go there, not just in spirit. Anytime. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't wait to do that. I want to leave and do that. I don't care if you say I have to stay. I want to leave and do that. <laughs> <laughs> Does that speak of being in the world, but not of the world? Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. Like Paul said, you know, whether I was in the body or out of the body. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Paul didn't know. But the reality was, is, is that whether I'm in the body, whether I'm out of the body, I'm with Christ. Yeah. Right? Wow. I'm in that place. Right. And I have access to that place. Mm -hmm. I have access to that. See, I have access to that place. Oh, access access to that place. place. But we yeah. got to get a revelation. Right. Not here, but we got to get a revelation here mm -hmm. that we're in that place. And his call is for us to abide in the transforming power of his offering. Yeah, yeah. So that in the transforming yeah, yeah. power of his offering, we can be mm -hmm. yeah. right there. transformed. Mm -hmm. Spirit, soul, and body. body in that place now. Mm -hmm. Now I don't, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm not 100 there yeah, myself. That, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, I right. Love I love it, but he is, he is not time. Like there's no time with him. There's no limits, no That's barriers right. mm -hmm. in time and space. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we're still subject to them yeah. because of this physical body. Yeah. Is that not the truth? So we can actually go beyond that somehow in the circle, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, think about what Jesus I did. Yeah, you know, Jesus Jesus said it Before Jesus, yeah. think about this. Before yeah. Jesus was crucified, mm -hmm. yeah. what happened? Yeah, he moved yeah. to the crowd. You know? And the train he was transfigured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they threw him off the cliff. He just walked. Right? Yeah. Right? Through right? other cliff. He yeah. just walked through the crowd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? I mean, I don't think we understand the supernatural ability yeah. that is in Christ. Oh, oh. Yeah. 
the supernatural ability. And we got to get a revelation that we're not just people living on the earth, waiting and buying, buying for our time to go be with Him. We're supernatural beings on the earth, uh, abiding in Him so that He abides in us. And as He abides in us, we become as He is in the earth. Right, right. Mm. Yeah, nothing yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, not just, just mere men. Yeah. yeah, we have to walk in the light, and the thing is, we have to get in the glory and stay in the glory and go yeah. from glory to glory. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and then, so you walk in the victory. And yeah. I'm hearing the word change. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But Amen. then change comes because when you're in that circle, it will. Jesus only spoke. His purpose was to do good, right? Yeah. And he, his purpose was to die for the sins of the world, yeah. but he also you know, we heal people. Yeah. So, so what I'm trying to say, when we come out of glory, we must we must change something other than ourselves. Okay? That's right. Mm-hmm. That's okay? right. We Amen. Change people's lives. That's right. And because um, mm-hmm. um, um, you can have the ground where you walk. Yep. Right. Yep. And that's what God wants you to absolutely you know, take territories. Yeah. And none of us don't fully understand what that means. Yep. That's right. He has a, a complete sense of surrendered heart, and it'd be automatically taking, um, you know, taking ground. And people will, yeah. it's like Peter was so full. Well, one of the disciples, the shadow, just healed people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if you get so full of Jesus, and it's, it's an outpour of his love right. and mm-hmm. his glory, that's right. and they, they won't see you, they'll see God. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's what God wants. You've got to get into the glory yeah. so we're transformed yeah. from inward. That's right. And um, could you can uh, such things as being translated, like, you know, in prayer, and yeah. your spirit man can go there. Sometimes Jeez. your body may go there. That's too, right. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, like, you know so, mm-hmm. so that's a different time. Yeah. We have to live outside of our time, but that's maybe right. this time of eternity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It all comes from abiding, abiding in, living, yeah. in the power oh, yes. of right. his offering. Yeah. 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 Where he becomes... His life becomes our life, right. and we begin to live as the transforming power right. of the offering. In other words, you know, we're at the place of see. See, the goal of Enoch wasn't to get to heaven. Right. The goal of Enoch was to become like him in the earth. Right. And and he was so much so that God took him as a prophetic picture right. of a now time for you and I. As we're seated with him. Mm-hmm. Is that a picture of Enoch playing with his grandson Noah? Oh, cool. Boats and water. <laughs> wow. Wow. Amen. What's that, Grandpa? Yeah. Wow. So, wow. so it's see, it's so interesting to me that that in in the Hebrew, it's in a future tense. <laughs> so he's walking in a future state <laughs> on earth. How many know David lived that way? <laughs> David lived in a future state. <laughs> How many know he? You know. He danced before the presence of God, the the, the Ark of the Covenant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? I mean, I mean, it was twenty four hour worship prior to David. Only the the, the high priest could go in. Mm-hmm. David, it was almost like you know, you know, often wonder. Okay, David broke the rules. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. But why? Because he had a heart that was moved <laughs> by God, mm-hmm. and because his heart was moved by God, David became. The transforming power of the offering. Mm. Mm. See, he saw, Enoch saw that God was, and that he was a, a rewarder of those who diligently mm. seek him. Mm. Enoch was the seventh from man which speaks of completeness and fullness. For 300 years, he walked with God. 300 is connected with death and supernatural victory over death. As seen in the life of Enoch, Noah, Gideon, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. 300 speaks of the Holy Spirit and fire. So on the day of Pentecost, that speaks of 300. Okay? Ephesians 4. Go with me to Ephesians 4 and let's finish here. Ephesians 4. See, you know... And, I, and I've done this myself. I've preached this. I heard it preached. But there's coming a time 
where the church will be like Enoch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's an Enoch generation arising. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Let me decree this. There's an Enoch mm -hmm. generation arising that will not see death. death. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. That will not see death. Mm -hmm. Because they will be no more. Mm -hmm. It'll be no more me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And if you don't okay. believe me, look at this. Ephesians 4. Mm -hmm. I believe you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4. Starting in verse 13. Okay? So we see here, I'm going to ask there in verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, some evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Until, everybody say until. Until. Yeah. We come to the unity of the faith. Mm -hmm. And of the intimate knowledge of the Son of God. Because you can't come to a perfect man without the intimate knowledge. Right. With the intimacy with the transforming offering. To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. That we should no longer be children tossed wow. to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, mm -hmm. but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him mm -hmm. who is the head Christ. Mm -hmm. So the transforming power of the offering causes you and I to offer up our lives as a living sacrifice where we are not, but he is. Mm. Look at these, look at these um, five things here that, that, that Paul says here in Ephesians. That Big thing. there'll be unity in, uh, in the faith. Mm. Okay. Now unity doesn't mean what we think it means. What does it mean? Unity doesn't mean that everybody's going to have a, you know, this agreement. Unity in the faith is unified with the fullness of the Trinity. Mm. Mm. Unity of the faith mm. is unified with the Trinity. We can't have unity in the church if we're not in unity with the mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Trinity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Father, Son, mm -hmm. and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm. So unity in the faith. Number two, in the intimate knowledge of the Son of God. Okay? Mm. Intimacy to the Son of God. In other words, intimacy into the way. Mm. Number three, a perfect man. Okay? I say a perfect man. Perfect man. Perfect man. Enoch lived before his time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So much so that God took him. Think about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. There was something that Enoch lived that God's mm -hmm. raising a generation to become. Mm -hmm. Because Enoch's a picture of Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, somewhere, somewhere in Matthew it says, uh, you must be perfect. As my Father in heaven is perfect. So the, this is the perfection being mm -hmm. exactly to God. Perfection of who? Yeah. Jesus. Christ. Yes. It's where we become so transformed by his offering mm -hmm. that we become the offering in our life, which transforms those around us. Mm -hmm. Because it's no longer I that lives, but Christ, but Christ, Christ that lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's the perfect man. Mm -hmm. well, in other words, I become so, I've, I, it's the place where we are so offered to him mm -hmm. that he becomes the offering. Mm -hmm. He becomes, we, he becomes us. We become him. Mm -hmm. To the measure, think of this, to the measure of the stature mm -hmm. of the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. We're not there yet. No, but I want to be. Mm -hmm. But God's taking us there. Mm -hmm. Before Jesus shows up on scene again, mm -hmm. his second coming, there will be a people mm -hmm. who live to the measure of the full stature of Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And the fifth thing is no longer moved by anything other than him. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to get to the place where you're not moved by anything. By anything. Yes. Boy, do we need that now in our yeah. current times. But him. Mm -hmm. Think about that. That is the transforming power of abiding in the offering. Mm -hmm. That we have a heart that's only moved by him and him alone. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. This is already a little bit already. Your Holy Spirit showed me the, them trying to kill John pouring oil, couldn't kill him, so just put him on the island. It kind of relates to me a little bit about Enoch, where yeah. he just mm -hmm. lived in another presence yeah. beyond mm -hmm. all that. Maybe that's a long shot, but it might be something. <clears throat> if no. Enoch, no. if Enoch could live uh -huh. in a future time, yeah. in this present day, mm -hmm. you and I can live in a future time. Nowhere in the Bible, in our present day. nowhere it says that John actually died, and that's mm -hmm. something that I kind of put a stake in the ground, but nobody wants to go at. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Nowhere does it say that John died, does it? Not in Scripture, but no. it, it does in history. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. we'll see for sure in another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's yeah. pray. Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll. Uh, we want the word become flesh, right? yeah. our flesh. You know, right. you know, I'm not saying I'm right, but uh, yeah, no word. Where word Jesus, the word became yeah, flesh. flesh. Yeah. No, we're yeah. to become yeah. His flesh. His flesh. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So, yeah. Father, we pray for that. Yes. Yes. Father, we desire mm -hmm. to to not only uh, be transformed mm. by abiding in. Yes. Your offering, yes. but we want to become a transforming offering yes. mm -hmm. that reflects you, mm. that points people to your presence, that points people to the to the circle of the Trinity. So, mm -hmm. Father, we we just we just want to be moved by you. Just as Jesus was moved by you, we want to be moved by you. Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, the three that are one. And so tonight, Lord, as Romans 12, 1 says, we dedicate, we offer up what's close to our heart. So that you are the one that's close to our heart, where we become moved by you. Not by our situations, not by our circumstances, not by what the world says, but by you. We want to be so transformed where your life becomes our life. Where me is out of the equation and us you become the reality of our life Father I pray for a deeper revelation of living mm -hmm. our future life with you in our present moment for a deeper revelation of an Enoch generation arising. Yes, Lord. Yes. <clears throat> well, we're not trying to get out of this place. But we're going deeper into you. Deeper into your circle. Where your manifested presence flows out of us become the reformers you've called us to become. Just as Jesus was a reformer, you've called us to become reformers. Amen. In the mighty and powerful name of Yeshua. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you, those that are watching online. Look forward to seeing you Tuesday night or next Sunday night.
6 o'clock. God bless you. Have a great week.